Paul Fallen Rain here on another video on Girls X B -B 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 Battle 2. <laughs> All right, so we are going to look at some of the customizations for just some of the top tier girls. I'm not going to cover all of them in the video because you can easily check the uh, Girls X Battle 2 Discord guide to kind of get a good idea about what to customize. I'm going to go over just some of the top tier girls and I'm actually going to use the guide as a reference point. So uh, let's go over and take a look here. So this is the Girls X Battle 2 guide, the most recent one that come out in July. Okay. Now what happens is, right, is that when you zoom in a bit here, as you can see, you can see little information next to the pictures of each of the girls in the tier guide. Okay. It says crystal, holy attack damage, HP attack. Now when it says crystal, it's actually talking about the Dragon Jade crystal. Okay. So let's use that as an example for Kratos, okay? What it's telling us to do, if you go into here, go into gear, and go into the nebula core thing, it is referring to this one here. Holy attack damage, attack, and HP. So this is the one that it recommends to use for a Kratos setup, okay? Now, I'm doing something a bit different, but I'll talk about that afterwards, okay? I just want to give you guys an idea about how to use the um, tier guide to find, you know, I mean, the best ways to kind of customize the girl. Now, the next one is the antique. Now, the antique is the uh, the gear or item next to the nebula core, which I explained in my other video, which is this one here. So when you go to replace, these are all the types of antiques. They say gear, but it's antiques as well. All right. Now, the gear that it recommends for a Kratos setup normally is the fusion umbrella. OK, the fusion umbrella is this one here. All right. Which is giving you extra attack, damage reduction and immunity control. OK, now. The fusion umbrella is a good one for Kratos, but Kratos builds up her immunity control over time anyway. So she might not necessarily need that. OK, but again, I'm going to explain to you in a minute what I'm doing. But I'm going to just show you, of course, firstly, what the discord recommends all right so very simple um so same thing with nifilim you get the cut you get you kind of get the picture but i'll do one more for you so nifilim it says here crystal speed hp 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 <laughs> okay but um basically i'll show you which one that means as well so let's go over to nifilim and i will show you here where's nifilim all right there we are so you go into gear go to nebula core the one it's referring to is the one I actually have on her myself as well, which is this one year here. 115 speed, 32 HP. I don't think there's another one. Let me just check and make sure of that though. There's an attack one. There's a heal precision. Yeah, I think that's the only one which is for HP wise. Yes, yes. So even if you don't have the nebula core, well, you all should anyway, because it's the event, but even if you don't have the nebula core, there will be very similar um, stats in even the more other, the Dragon Jays before it, the yellow ones. It's just, it's a boost in the uh, stats that it gets given. So yeah, so it's recommending this one here, the 115 speed and HP to kind of, you know, get her attack off as quick as possible. Okay. So that is Nifalim. All right. So the antique that it recommends is the invisible cloak or the fake crystal. Okay. Now, all you've got to do is just look for these, really. Now, the fake crystal is the one I actually have on it as well, so that's great. But if you wanted to use the invisible cloak, it's this one here. This is the one I put on her before as well. So it gives you a damage reduction, extra HP, and also holy damage as well. And if you don't know what holy damage means, holy damage ignores armor, okay? And it's a certain, uh, for this one, it's a certain percentage. Now, specifically, again, she might not need that because she ignores armor anyway, but again... I'm going to give you my uh, opinion in a minute. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. So, that's what they recommend for that. So, you kind of get the picture here. All you've got to do is look at this. I've already posted um, this uh, guide in the previous video, but I'll make sure I pull it in this new video that I'm recording now as well. And um, just take a look, really. Just take a look. Zoom in and uh, see, like you say, Epris Saint here. She... They tell you to do the holy holy damage attack and HP one. Very very similar to Kratos, I believe. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing, but they just change around the wording, so that's fine. So they say that plus they say the um, fusion umbrella or the burning blades. Now, burning blades is for preventing lethal damage 
three times. So that could be useful as well in this, actually, because there's a few squads that have one shot kind of KOs as well. OK, so, yeah, <clears throat> all you got to do is just look at this list and it will give you everything you need on here. OK, as kind of like a basic setup. Limit break, um, different types. Uh, there's not really a specific right type of one for this. Um, it just really just depends on your setup. The one I've got currently is the overall one, which gives a bit of extra boost in speed. So I can take the initiative with the active skills. But, you know, you could think about using the attack one if it works better for that particular girl. Or even the HP one if you're more going for like a, a longer kind of matchup where, let's say... You know, it might be, you might be utilizing uh, damage reduction, for example, which is what I definitely recommended in the first video I did about using chaos. So you might want to use HP for that one. Um, for the second limit break, I usually just put on the crit resistance because crit damage is a massive thing in the, in the game right now. And it's certainly becoming more and more popular as well. Um, to utilize crit damage a lot more than just standard attack. So to me, I think this is pretty cool. Um, the backwaters isn't a bad one, but you don't know whether if the opponent has more higher HP than you. So it's not really good for this. This is more for PvE use, uh, player versus event, where you know you've got a guild boss who has m millions more HP than yourself. And then you can get extra damage through that way. Or, of course, you've got the healing aura as well. So again, if you're utilizing more of a defensive squad where you're doing damage over time and... Um, absorbing damage and then taking them out that way then this might be better for you so you can then have better survivability when um when they try to attack you and for the last one um it's anywhere between again holy blessing for defenses or baptism for um control now there are still some girls of course that can do really really good control as well and um, I did have a fight with somebody who uh, did quite well at petrifying me and was able to stop some of my girls from using their active skills. So um, baptism is where that will really, really help with that because it will remove any of any kind of control effects or DOT damage as well. So, you know, baptism is always a good one in that sense. But if not, then, yeah, utilize the 15 HP at the end of the round for defensive purposes. So, yeah, that's pretty much that. Now, let's go into my opinions, all right? Now, if you want my opinions, um, I personally think that for most of your girls, this is what I've been doing, okay? And the reason why I've done this is because there was a particular person that I lost to and I lost really badly. I wasn't upset, but I was thinking, how did they beat me so badly? Now, I'm going to show you the, the matchup, actually. I'm referring to, because I've still got it here. This guy called Mumi. All right, so... With my setup, if you look here, I'm the squad on the left and he's the squad on the right. Now, he managed to literally take me out, literally, before I even attacked. I, I, well, I got one attack off right there, but I hardly got any attacks off. Just look what happens, you know what I mean? Literally does that, eats it with Empress Saint twice, bow, done. <laughs> so, I, I, I don't mind, innit? Like, you know, it's, it's only 16 points, it's not a big deal, but... I was like, wow, like, what did he do? Like, what did he actually do? Because my setup wasn't too bad. Don't get me wrong. I've been winning. Like, look at my setup. Like, I've been winning quite a few matches, even against more tougher opponents. But his one really intrigued me. I was like, what in the world? Like, I didn't even get to literally land an attack. But if we just click that one more time, what actually happened here? If you look from the, if you look from the get-go, can I pause it? Oh, I can't really. Oh, no, wait. If I do that... Ah, oh, but it covers the thing. That's so annoying. Well, from here, you can see that all of his girls have energy straight away. So he's got, like, fake crystals on all of these girls. That's the first thing. He probably also has speed um, on all of the girls as well. And he's just activated all of his attacks all before mine. And that's why he's taken me out. Um, you know what I mean? Now, in this sense, um, for, for, for an event like this, even though I've always been a bit of an advocate of not really liking Hottie, Hottie might help for reducing down armor because armor is going to be quite a key factor in this as well for defense and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, Hottie might be okay to use for this is what I would say. But if you know, if you know my, if you've listened to me for a little while, you know that I'm not exactly the biggest fan of Hottie, but for this, 
she might be kind of useful, especially when she gets below the uh, 50% ratio marker and then she reduces down the armor, which would be really good in that sense. So yeah, and I, th I think actually she would also, she could also boost your speed. So that would be useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what I'm, what I'm learning myself, so I'm learning is that, and I said this in the other video, funny enough. So this is a reoccurring thing, but I said this in the first time I did this video, but speed is a key factor in this all right that's my opinion okay speed is a key factor so after that loss i said to myself you know what i need to start looking at my squad again so i literally put um speed and hp on all of my girls pretty much speed and hp or sometimes maybe speed and attack as well but um yeah i, I made sure that speed was a definitive factor in that and um yeah that is going to be really, really good for letting off your attacks first. Because what you've got to remember is, is that Girls X Battle 2 is a game about having a little bit of like a... I want to say hierarchy system, not really hierarchy, but you've got loads of different people fighting everyone at different power levels. So if you don't have a little bit of initiative and speed, then you might still win the match because you're just more powerful. But when the battlefield is completely even like this gate like this event is the key factor to me personally is going to be one your aura boost and two how quickly you can let off the skills okay because once you let them off you know if you crowd control or whatever then that's when you know i mean you're going to take the initiative and that's what you need here you really need to take the initiative is um what i would personally say the saying a map is saying it's it's not going to be a type of event where a lot of the matches are going to last really, really long. Um, unless you've got like, I don't know, like a Kong Ming versus a Kong Ming. But a lot of the time, um, the matches aren't going to last very long. Because I was actually originally trying to do um, DO, a DOT setup where, you know, I would use like Trinity, Crystal. You can see that there I've customized in there. Trinity, Crystal um, and Fenrir for all for bleeding purposes. But the problem is, is that as much as Trinity is an amazing girl, and I do really like Trinity, for this, she's not the best only because she's based around DOT damage, damage, damage over time. Um, you could say Nifilim is a little bit as well, but because she chops down HP a little bit more effectively than, um, than Trinity does, I've been just seeing that I feel that she's been giving me a little bit more of a better result having Nifilim and stuff like that. I do put Trinity sometimes on there just to kind of mess around. And I'm still learning. Don't get me wrong. I'm still learning. I don't have a definitive answer for um, how to set up the girls here. I really don't. <laughs> it just varies between person to person. But a lot of people are using just pretty much most of the top tier girls. Like Kratos, Nifilim, Fenrir, Esau, Empress, and maybe one other girl. Maybe Raphael or Trinity. So just, everyone's just using mainly the top tier girls, pretty much. So, uh, yeah. But um, that's what I would say. Follow the guide and stuff like that. And if you want to follow what I'm doing, then I'll tell you to put an emphasis on speed. Okay, speed is going to be a definitive factor within the game and having the energy boost. And that's why that guy has over 1,500 points because a lot of the time he's probably getting the advantage straight away and being able to take out maybe three or four of the girls before they even let off their um, uh, special active skills. Yeah, I hope that kind of gives you an idea anyway on how to kind of set them up and stuff. You know, just play around, just play around with different, um, just play around with different girls, different combinations. That's what this whole entrance exams thing about. So um, it will give you a good idea about how to work it out. Yeah. So anyway, that's pretty much it for the video. Um, like and subscribe, leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.